Well, hello everyone. I'm here with Yvette. Hi. <laughs> For those who don't know, actually, I did a video like where I did like a long Spider-Man marathon video. It took me forever to edit. She was in that. Yeah, it was fun. Go watch that. I like that video. It was really fun. But we're here with another movie that wasn't actually something that we were planning to, on reviewing at all. But we had to talk about Emerald Fennel's latest film, Saltburn, because this is a movie that it's kind of impossible not to talk about. It wants you to talk about it, it so bad. It needs you to talk about <laughs> it. So Yvette, why don't you tell the lovely people uh, what Saltburn is for those who don't know, really briefly, and then we'll get into the review. Okay. This is Emerald Fennel's second feature film, uh, following her very successful Promising Young Woman. Mm -hmm. It's been described as being similar to uh, the talented Mr. Rick Yes. Is that right? It follows the character of Oliver Quick, who after struggling to fit in at Oxford University, manages to be swooped in under the wing of the most popular and charming Felix, who is played by Jacob Elordi, who's from Euphoria. Okay. And Felix is actually a member of a very wealthy family, and they end up inviting Oliver to his family's very lavish estate. It's like a castle. And like Mr. Ripley, Oliver is infatuated with this world and Felix and does anything and pretty much everything in order to stay at Saltburn. And I guess I'll just leave it at that. No, he he does he, <laughs> he does everything. Like Saltburn was not a film I was really prepared for. Like I remember enjoying Promising Young Woman, but I, I don't think I was as taken as everybody else was. I remember liking it. Mm -hmm. I think you felt the same way. Yeah, I remember liking it too. It didn't really, it was it didn't have like a lasting imprint. It was right. just something that like I watched. Like a fun thing and, to watch. Yeah, this I'm gonna probably remember for right. a very, very long time. Yeah, like I felt like Promising Young Woman had that appearance that it was very edgy, but thought maybe it kind of played it a little safe. Well, uh, Saltburn shut me up because yeah, Fennel goes like balls to the wall. She gets right up in your face. Yeah. She challenges the audience to basically tap out. Saltburn is 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 is, is maybe won't be as widely like enjoyed as Promising Young Woman, mm -hmm. but personally, I I thought it was like a step up for Fennel as like a filmmaker. Yeah, like you definitely don't want to take your mom to see this. Like I would never take my mom <laughs> to see this movie, but it was so enjoyable yeah. just because it was so like jaw droppingly shocking and salacious and sexy and just disturbing at times. There's like a little bit of like Yorgos Lanthimos kind of vibe to Saltburn. It's like at times it's darkly funny. Um, sometimes it's absurd. Uh, you mentioned it was like sexual. It's oddly sexual. Um, it's uncomfortably sexual, psychologically bleak. And I, I don't think like audiences are always up for the challenge of being challenged because in many ways like the film is kind of like an endurance test. It really is like, how much can you handle? Right. You're you still here? You're you still haven't here? walked out yet? Okay. <laughs> exactly. And like, if you're kind of the audience member that kind of like, I didn't like the movie because none of the characters were likable. Stay away from the Saltburn. Yes. Stay away from the, the, the estate yes. that is called Saltburn. Yes, if you did not like Wolf of Wall Street because there was no characters you could relate to and mm -hmm. all the characters are kind of despicable, you're not gonna like this. No. You're not gonna like this. Probably you're not, not gonna have fun. No. But if you were able to watch Wolf of Wall Street and have like a blast just hanging out with these ridiculous characters, then you're gonna like this, I think. Yeah, exactly. So it, it stars Barry Keoghan, the Banshees of Anna Sharon. He is such a presence. He's already becoming like one of our great actors yeah. of our time. And just like you mentioned, like with the Wolf of Wall Street, like Leonardo DiCaprio in Wolf of Wall Street, detestable character, but you you can't keep your eyes like off this guy. Yeah, you can. He just has a certain air to him mm. that's creepy and intriguing and weird. Just everything is not right. You know, like yeah. we need to talk about Kevin. It's like, we need to talk about Kyogen because something <laughs> is always off yeah, about so it, the characters he plays. Yeah, it's always kind of like unnerving. In Saltburn, his character Oliver is um, a fish out of water but begins to kind of infiltrate the family by mm -hmm. playing kind of mind manipulation games to climb the, the social mm -hmm. ladder at Saltburn. And in many ways, you, I think in the beginning, I feel like I was rooting for him because, you know, he mentions coming from like humble beginnings and there's a joy mm -hmm. to kind of like watching him yeah. take on these self-absorbed elitist in a way, right? Yeah, it's, it's kind of like a, 
I was gonna say a mic fuck, but I don't want to say a bad word. You can <laughs> say it. I'll leave it. Um, this is a Christian family show. Your mother's watching. <laughs> it's a little twisted because you kind of start off like rooting for this kind of sick, twisted character, yeah. and then you realize real quickly, like, oh, I did something bad. I wasn't supposed to be rooting for this person. Yeah, he's like far from being kind of like a hero of sorts because he really does like disgust you at times, like. <laughs> Doesn't he? It's oh, very disturbing. You can't help but like admire like the commitment as an actor because he's a yeah. very committed actor. I feel like it. A lot of times, it took me out of the movie several times because I was like, "Oh my goodness, he is so committed mm -hmm. right now. Like he's going all out." Yeah. And it's impressive as an actor. I'm. I'm not gonna ruin anything. I'll, yeah. I'm just gonna say two words: shower drain. There's more than just shower well, drain. There's a lot more than shower drain, but <laughs> that one me. for some reason got me. Like, there's also just like a lot of other supporting performances too. Like, what's the guy's name from Euphoria? I, Jacob Elordi. I'm terrible with names. Yes, he was really good. Yeah, I am a huge fan of his just because I saw Euphoria and mm -hmm. I thought he was he's, really good. He's right now in um, Priscilla movie. Oh, he Sophia. is? Yeah, he's oh, playing Elvis. Oh, cool. But yeah, he was like perfectly cast as, you know, the devilishly mm -hmm. handsome Felix who has this like innate ability mm -hmm. to kind of draw in his admirers, really well done. Another supporting actor I really liked was Archie, um, I can't remember his name, I'll just put him here. This guy, this guy who plays Farley. Like if you consider Oliver a protagonist, I guess like Farley would be the antagonist of the story because he's kind of an outsider himself, but he's like constantly using Oliver as kind of a punching bag. Yeah, he's a bully. He's a bully, he like <laughs> belittles him. He like, in order to like boost his own status within mm -hmm. this family. And then you have also Rosamund Pike. Oh my gosh, I forgot about her. Who, <laughs> like, so good. So good. And somehow is able to master like that quality. Yeah, again, I think everyone's just perfectly cast. Mm -hmm. They all bring this like essence that is perfect for that character. We all know, you know, Rosen Pike in Gone Girl, mm -hmm. and she has this like very specific essence of like being a kind of detached, like really rich kind of like <laughs> snobby yeah. lady. Completely unaware of all yeah. of her faults and says it with such conviction and truthfulness it's that so it just makes it funny. interesting though. Oh, beautiful eyes. Oh, how wonderful. Yeah, I told you it wasn't a minga. Oh, but darling, you're kind about everyone. You can't be trusted. The actors across the board, I want to say everyone, even the, the actress who played the sister, she was so yeah. good. And that one, there's a speech towards the end that she's like amazing. It's like really good. Mm -hmm. Acting is a big salt burn achievement. Mm -hmm. The cinematography and the production sign, I would say are like the second tier, like really impressive achievements for me. It was shot by Lana Sengren, the Academy Award winner, DP behind like La La Land, um, No Time to Die, Babylon. Was it and shot on film? It was, 35 millimeter, looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, beautifully color graded, has like a boxy aspect ratio. And it almost had like the appearance of kind of like like a preppy clothing brand. Yeah, you know what totally. I, mean? I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, like Ralph Lauren yes, or something. Yes, exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, like I think Chanel, Ralph Lauren, like mm -hmm. Polo, they all do those like, yeah, yeah. they're like fashion reels. Yeah, they're like, shot on film yes. at a castle. Yes, at a luxurious and castle. they're playing like golf or something. It looks yeah. like the Saltburn yeah. State already. So like it already kind of embodies that, like that luxurious lifestyle. Yeah. And in terms of the one, three, three, like aspect ratio, I read that Emerald had like this idea, I read on, on an article that she wanted like the audience to feel as if they were peeping through a dollhouse, she says. And I don't think most audiences like struggle with the feeling of like being an outsider to these characters because like these characters are so awful that yeah. like, it's if you relate hard. to these characters, then you should get yourself checked out. It's not hard. It's not hard to, to not feel connected or to not feel like relatability because mm -hmm. they're from a different planet, really. I don't know what the aspect ratio thing does though. The only thing I would say is that it, it helped create a feeling maybe that like you're trapped with these people because it felt a little tighter. Like claustrophobic? Yeah, and you're able to like really focus in on certain details. Without the extra space on the frame, I was able to see just a close up of someone's face and my eyes are not drifting to this or that. That's the only thing. So like, mm -hmm. I don't know if it really was necessary, the aspect ratio, but it was interesting. Mm -hmm. Kind of speaking to the production design, like the Saltburn estate itself kind of like serves as a character like within the film, it feels like. Like I couldn't help think about The Shining as a similar uh. kind of feeling. Like I kept oh, thinking yeah. about The Shining the whole time, thinking about the, the Overlook Hotel and how that hotel yeah. plays like a character and it has this 
like seductive, yeah, kind of evil atmosphere. Yeah, because he's like in love with Saltburn. He's like mesmerized yeah. by Saltburn. And he's and like, like Saltburn's threatening to. Yeah, do and him. he's like under the spell mm-hmm. of Saltburn. Very similar to the. Very. So there's even like a maze. Yes, I was gonna say that. Yeah, that's there's very similar. Very similar. And reading into the movie a little bit, like at the center of the maze at the Saltburn estate is like the statue of a minotaur, which could be like some reference to that Greek myth, Theseus and the Minotaur, where like Theseus has to go on a journey to defeat the Minotaur in the middle of the maze. But the production design in Saltburn, I just thought was really beautiful. Like I know like the the, the location does a lot of the heavy lifting on its own. Like the, the lavish country home was once handed down from generation to generation, like stemming from old royalty. There's like that sense of trying to cling on to tradition and like nobility by both families. And also like the salt burn itself is trying to cling on to tradition, but like modern like sin is seeping through and festering yeah. this this place. It's like old money meets like New Age corruption. Yes. <laughs> yes. Should have had them apple bottom jeans, boots with the fur. All in all, like Saltburn is a devilishly good time, but it, it may not be like everyone's idea of a good of a good time. And the film like unabashedly like pushes the envelope, like intentionally, and that might lead to maybe like some of my personal criticisms I have of the film. Like often I felt like characters, specifically Oliver, like would do something. I'll just call it like outrageous. And I always felt like, was that really like justified? Like it was fun to watch and it was crazy, but like, did it make sense? Was it justified? Was it something that Fennel was doing to like intentionally just push the envelope? It kind of felt like shock value sometimes, like just for- Right, yes. Excitement or- Yeah, like I didn't know if Fennel was like intentionally pushing the envelope. Like towards the end, it got like downright nasty, but I don't know if it always felt psychologically- truthful like it was it fully embedded in the character right and what the character would do or the story i don't know sometimes it did feel a little bit like how far can we go right 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 before you walk out of this theater. like it didn't always feel like um <laughs> entirely grounded and believable mm-hmm. it felt ludicrous and it felt maybe designed to be that way so it's kind of like take that with a grain of salt but like in the end i guess it's it's a satire right so it I kind of like, you kind of have to just like go along with the ride in order to enjoy it. There are themes of course of like surrounding like class and privilege and like there's a lot of jabs like aimed at the elite and and often like their complete disconnection with reality, but I don't know if- Yeah, I don't know if it's particularly a deep story or if there's like some very revolutionary commentary going on about social class, you know, like Parasite. Like it's not like, yeah, it's not like a Parasite. It's not like a Parasite. Yeah, I would even say like kind of leading into the last, I won't ruin that either, but there's like the last elongated shot at the end. That's like kind of an in credit shot. Mm-hmm. Like that shot alone almost kind of made me go, yeah, I don't know if this film really has a lot on its mind. Like it kind of, the sequence kind of reminded me of um, the Joker. Yeah. When he was in the bathroom. Yeah. And everyone's like, oh, it's so beautiful. He's d- dancing in the bathroom and you're like, oh, whatever. It's, it's just like, but why? But why, but why? <laughs> Actually the but why question that's probably like the biggest thing with Saltburn is yeah. is cool, hilarious, funny, but why? The but why is missing from this movie, but does it need a but why when you have so no, many- I don't think it does. But it's so much fun, Jan. Yeah, you know exactly. what I mean? Because it's so it. much fun, Jan. I don't want to be too negative on the movie because I really do think that like Fennel really kind of- Stepped it up. Stepped it up for, for both of us, I would say. Yeah, right? stepped it up a yeah. lot for me. Like, wow, I was not expecting that yeah. at all. Especially as a director in her technical skills, like her yeah. skills behind the camera, I felt it was just such a, like a more bolder vision. I, whether you love it or you hate it, it's 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 kind of gonna be hard to not, at the very least, appreciate the bold swing. So personally, I had a lot of fun with Saltburn, loved a lot of the crafts in it, and it was a, it was a, Interesting vision to say the least. So I I give this a solid eight out of 10. I actually would probably rate it higher because I really enjoyed it. I thought the acting was ex- really great. I thought just like perfect casting. Shout out to casting. Everybody was perfectly cast. I thought the movie looked, everything about it was really good to me. Other than like some of those like, but why moments? It, I still think it was really fun delving into this really kind of interesting group of people. So I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. Nine out of 10. Let's talk Oscars. Do you wanna take it away, Yvette? Is it possible that this will get anything? Honestly think, I tweeted earlier like a couple days ago that I think this was like the Babylon of this year. 
And mm -hmm. to me, it's just like in the sense that the Academy members will likely not respond to this this movie at all. Mm -hmm. Typically, films like Saltburn don't play very well with the Academy members. And I, I think it's going to probably rub a lot of Academy members the wrong way. I will say, though, I feel like it's more cohesive than Babylon. It's a very cohesive, well-told story. Mm -hmm. It is. It's shorter, too. It's, it's not... a lot shorter. I mean, at the end of the day, Babylon, it scored three nominations still. Yeah. So I think that will probably be Saltburn's best day, three nominations. So you think most likely nothing, though? If it's going to get any nominations, I think the only chance it has is probably cinematography, um, production design, and then like very, like much less likely, I would say, is... Um, Roseman Pike in supporting, considering that the category is kind of weak, but I don't know, Color Purple, no no spoiler, but Color Purple kind of killed it. So like that's filling up now. Yeah. And then maybe like Barry Keoghan, an actor. I was going to say, because has he been nominated already? He has been nominated for Banshees of Anna Sharon. So he's already been there, maybe. Is there any room for um, him in Best Actor? This year is pretty tight for Best Actor. So he would have to bump out Coleman Domingo. Oh, Coleman Domingo is like in 27 movies this year. Yeah, so, I mean, that would be hard to bump him yeah. out. Yeah. But if I were to guess today, I would probably say that um, the Academy will most likely completely dismiss it. Did Promising Young Woman get anything? Promising Young Woman did really well. Okay, then they like her. They like her, but it was also a pandemic year. Oh. The amount of movies out there were very few movies to choose from. They did like it. They did They did like it a lot. They awarded her Best Screenplay. But this is, man, this is... Yeah, Promising Young Woman had a little bit of that, like, story of, you know, female, was, female empowerment. It was off the Me Too movement. Yes. And I feel like this does not. No. This is kind of just for fun yeah like thrills i know amazon currently is like campaigning the hell out of it like i see screenings like every day for yeah. this movie so but you never know but just like reading kind of and feeling the gut reaction i just don't feel like the salt burn is, is a movie they're gonna go for which is fine because so many good movies um didn't get nominated for oscars and they're still good movies you know yeah. i mean babylon <laughs> deserved a little bit more right <laughs> Anyways, what do you guys all think? Uh, the film opens for limited release, I think very soon on the 17th, which has probably already happened by the time I post this. Comment below whether you hated it, whether you loved it, what Oscar predictions you're thinking is gonna get. So hit the subscribe button down below if you wanna see more movie reviews and other Oscar-related content. And until next time, everybody. We'll see you at the Oscars. Perfect. Good enough. That's good. I think it works. How do you say it? I usually say, it. I'll see you at the Oscars. But then sometimes you. you don't like the way I say it. Because sometimes no, I, I like the way you say it. It's always very cute. I will say, no one's ever commented that they like well, it. Well, I think it's cute. People probably click out by that time. They click out. Hmm. So, should I say at the beginning? Hi, everyone. I see you. I'll see you at the Oscars. <laughs>